In this video, we are going to look into the integer data type in detail. So let's go ahead and create a new file and call it integers. And let's look at a couple of examples. So first of all, how do you create an integer? Well, you can simply use all the uh, digits on your keyboard, simply type them without any other symbol in a, in a cell and Python can uh, understand it right away. This is what we call a numerical literal. So a literal is any combination of symbols in a cell or in a, in a code block that Python can literally understand. And if you simply type the digits four and two, Python literally understands it as 42. Okay, that's almost trivial. So let's um, go uh, one step further. So what else can we do to make working with integers quite nice? So let's say I want to model the number one million, just like this with six zeros. So in source code, this may, may be very hard to read, right? Because we cannot really identify the groups of three. And in practice, oftentimes we write uh, big numbers in groups of three. So how can you do that in Python? Well, obviously you cannot use the dot because the dot is obviously the uh, syntax that creates a floating point number, which we will look into in the next video. But um, how else could we um, group um, numbers? Well, in recent uh, versions of Python, you can simply use the underscore and the underscore is yeah, basically ignored as we can see. So Python doesn't store them. Um, so, but for us as the reader of the source code, we can now uh, easily uh, read and identify this number to be 1 million. Okay, so oftentimes you will see that in code. Don't be confused. Basically Python just ignores it just like a comment, okay? And uh, that makes uh, code a little bit nicer. And then also one thing to note, and we will look into that in more detail. Let's say if you want to write the number 10, and if you start that with a zero, like this here, you, see, you already see in JupyterLab that the first zero is red. And if I execute this, I get a syntax error. And here it says leading zeros are not allowed, are not permitted. And we will soon see why this is the case when we look into more details. But uh, before we do so, um, we can of course create also numbers using the constructors. So I'm talking about the int constructor that we have seen a couple of times before. We call it, let's say I give it the floating point number uh, 42.0. I get back simply the number 42. And also here you have to be a bit careful. So um, let's say for example, you have 42.87, um, the decimals, the 87 are just cut off and forgotten. So this is not rounding. This is just uh, extracting an integer um, out of some numeric object uh, by simply cutting away the decimals. And uh, this is um, uh, formally known as truncating, um, but it is definitely not rounding. So be careful here. And uh, this is using the in constructor. And now the in constructor, one detail we didn't see uh, so far in this course yet, the in constructor can also take uh, text data. And now you may wonder, uh, why is that the case? So first of all, let's check that. So if I go ahead and I write um, a text object with the number 42 in it, I get back a proper um, 42 as an integer. On the contrary, if I copy paste that, the 42 in a cell on its own, obviously I get back 42 as a text object, right? So um, the int object can be used to cast a textual data into um, numeric data if the text string um, adheres to some formatting rules, okay? For example, you cannot have, you cannot simply put an A in there. Um, this is not, um, this cannot be interpreted, but um, by simply, move, uh, if you simply have digits inside uh, a string, then you can um, convert that, so to say, or cast it um, as an integer. So why is that kind of useful? Well, remember in one of the exercises when we implemented a guessing game, and uh, there is also an exercise that I did not cover yet in the video, um, where you have to throw um, a die and uh, you have to guess uh, which side of the die comes up top. You may um, use the input function and um, let's say enter a number, um, Python adds one to it. If you go ahead and you execute this and let's go ahead and enter any number in the text box, we see that the input function returns a string, okay? So in other words, if I go ahead and let's say I add one to it, just as I want to do here, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a type error because obviously the left-hand operand is a string and the string plus a number is not defined in Python, okay? Sometimes plus works uh, for non-numeric types. We saw that when we looked at list concatenation and so on, but uh, usually it doesn't work. So what could you do? 
Well, you could simply wrap the entire expression with the int constructor. And uh, now if you go ahead, uh, this works. Okay, so this is a little trick um, that is worthwhile to know. And also, this is very helpful to know um, as sometimes when you load in data from an external data source, for example, CSV files, um, all the columns sometimes come as text strings, even though they may only hold numeric data. So I don't want to go into detail here, but sometimes you know for sure when you load in some data from a CSV file or an Excel file, that some column or some row must only have numbers and you know that for sure, then well, what you could do is you could loop over all the cells in the CSV file and simply uh, take whatever values in there and put it inside the int constructor and get back a proper integer object. Okay, so this is quite helpful uh, to know when, uh, when you're given non-integer data and you know it's actually integers. Okay, so far so good. And then uh, what I'm not going to go into detail in this video, of course, are the ar arithmetic operators. We saw them very early in the course. You can do all kinds of arithmetic with integers. Uh, we are not covering that here. But what we do cover here is how the numbers are going to be represented in a computer's memory. So let's go ahead and um, write here binary representation. So binary representations is the idea by which a number is represented in um, in a computer's memory. Okay, so maybe let's write here how numbers are stored inside a computer's memory. So we don't want to cover that in too much theory, but um, I want to cover it a little bit so uh, that you don't run into uh, the most common errors people make uh, or practitioners make when working with uh, numbers. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, look, first of all, at the uh, memory diagram that I have here. So let's say uh, we go ahead and let's say you create a, the number, let's say three, for example, okay? So what Python would do is it would go ahead and it would create a box and um, it would go ahead and uh, put a type um, to the box here, to the object. And then it has to write some zeros and ones in here, okay? So previously um, I was just, uh, usually writing dots in here or some um, random zeros and ones. But now let's get a bit more formal and let's try to understand um, what the numbers are going to look like. So in particular, the numbers that are in here, they will look like this, one, one, and then many, many zeros uh, leading that. Okay, there would be even more zeros. And let's say we store that as the variable A, then the whole memory diagram would look like this. So now the question is, how do I know that this is just the sequence, all zeros, and then one, one at the end, okay? So let's um, flip the page and look at how um, computers count and how computers, um, yeah, store numbers. So first, the first concept that you need to understand is the concept of a bit, okay? So bits in general are just the ones and zeros. So a bit of information is what we refer to as either a true or false statement about the world, so either one or zero. However, in the context of numbers, every bit has a position. So sometimes when we use the word bit, what we really mean is the position inside the system I'm going to draw here, okay? And we are going to go from uh, right to left. And the reason why is because we also do that, um, at least in the Western world, um, when we do high school or elementary school mathematics. So let's put the, the bits up here and we are going to put there exactly eight bits for now. This is enough for the example. And then right here, we have simply dots. Why? Because a number may consist of more than eight bits, okay? So we start by uh, using by writing with zero here on the right hand side because uh, always in computer science and also in Python, um, oftentimes we simply start to count at zero. It shouldn't confuse you right now. Now we introduce the, the idea, maybe let's do that in orange, of a digit. So what the digit really is, is what is the meaning of a piece of information in that position, okay? And the only thing you need to understand is that the meaning is can be derived from the formula two to the power of, let's call it B, lowercase b for the position of the bit that we are in. So the zeros bit would be two to the power of zero, which of course um, is one. Then we have one. So this is two to the power of one, which of course is two. 
This would be 2 to the power of 2, which of course is 4. This here would be 2 to the power of 3, and this of course would be 8. So what we see here is numbers doubling, right? 1, 2, 4, and so on. So already we can guess how this will go on. So this will be 2 to the 4, which will be 16. This will be 2 to the 5th, which will be 32. This here will be 2 to the 6th, which will be 64. And uh, this here will be 2 to the 7th, which will be the number 128, okay? So this is uh, what it means. So um, in other words, an integer in, in Python consists of a fixed number of bits. We read them by convention from right to left, but we could also uh, do that differently. But again, the convention just goes from right to left. And the reason why is because Arabic numbers, so the number system that we also use in the Western world is um, going from <laughs> right to left. So the the tens uh, are go to the right and the one hundreds go uh, to the left of it. So that's just the way of how we do arithmetic. And uh, depending on um, what a certain piece of information at that position is, so if it's zero or one, that means we will simply take this number here as the meaning, the semantic meaning of it. So let's do a couple of examples. I know that this may have been so far a bit theoretic, so let's do a very easy example. So um, several examples. So the example that I'm going to use is the number three. And again, I told you that this is the number three here, okay? So maybe let's put the three here. So why is that the number three that I just draw in the memory diagram? Well, if we go from right to left, if I put a one in the zeroth bit and I put a one in the one bit, then this would mean this first uh, um, one here implies that we use this one. And this one here implies that we are going to use this two. And then comes only a series of only zeros. And what that means is we will use none of these numbers, okay? And then what we are going to do is we are going to add up, and maybe I can use that, I can do that uh, here. We can we write the one here and we add together the two that we get. And we get from up here, we always get the zeros back. And so if we add all the zeros plus two plus one, we get the number three here, okay? So, and what usually sometimes uh, people write is to express the idea that this is a number in the decimal system, we will simply go ahead and write a lower 10 here to indicate that this is uh, a number in the decimal system as you know it from elementary school. Okay, so um, this is it. So let's do another example so that you get this down. It's not super hard. So the number nine, how does it work? Well, let's find a combination of bits, so of zeros and ones that make up the number nine. Okay, well, quite easy. We have eight here, we have one here, and that means we have one and one, and all of the other um, bits simply go to zero again. Okay, so we have one plus eight gives me nine, that's it. That is the number nine in uh, bits, in bi so-called binary representation. So binary means that there is one of two values and the one of two values is basically referring to the zeros or ones that we see here. So that is how a computer represents the number nine. So in a system where we only use um, eight bits, so eight ones and zeros to model numbers, um, this is, would be the sequence. Of course, in Python, we can model numbers greater than uh, or m numbers with more than eight bits. Okay, but before we continue, let's do uh, one more thing. So let's say we want to add the number three to the number nine, just, just simple plain um, addition. So how could that be done here? Well, it works just like you all remember from elementary school, so maybe you don't remember. So let's do a little review. So we have here one plus one gives me two, and whenever we go beyond one, so whenever the summation becomes greater than one, what we do is we carry over uh, one and we write down here zero. So in other words, if I say one plus one is zero and we carry over one, so let's carry it over here. And then we have zero plus one gives me one plus one gives me two. So in other words, I'm going to write down zero and carry over one. Then, then I have one plus zero plus zero gives me one. One plus zero gives me one. And then we have four times simply zero plus zero. So now let's translate what this means. Well, this is the number eight and four and eight and four together are 12. So in other words, three plus nine gives me 12. Okay, so this is just to exemplify to you that you could do all the arithmetic, everything you learned in your time in elementary school, you could basically also use it 
in the world where we only live with zeros and ones. So that's how computers work. And computers are very fast at this. So um, at the end of the day, um, that is what computers do when we um, do anything. Okay, so let's put in two more numbers on this page and then leave it at that. So um, special number is of course the number zero in the decimal world. The number zero in the decimal world is simply the sequence of all zeros. And now there's another kind of special number, the sequence of all ones. And the sequence of all ones, in this case, is the number 255. Okay, so in other words, I'm, I have eight bits here and eight ones make up the number 255. Now you may wonder how many bits are there? Well, this is um, basically implemented in inside Python and we don't really care about this. So Python will, what Python has built in, what we don't have to do is Python automatically makes um, these integer objects so big so that the number, the zeros and ones in there are enough to model basically any number we want up until to like some very, some built in upper limit. There's a very big number a uh, very, very big number beyond which Python cannot go and other programming languages also have this limitation. And the reason why there is a, an upper limit to all the natural numbers, to all the integer numbers is of course, because the numbers, the, uh, the, the bits here that, the, that we can use to make up a number, they are just at some point limited, right? We don't have um, infinite memory. Now, maybe another question you may have is, is it possible to have a second combination of zeros and ones to make up the same number? Okay, so in other words, could I make up the number uh, nine or the number 12 with a different combination of ones and zeros here? And the answer to that is simply no, okay? So it is theoretically proven that um, I can only um, make up or I can only, um, there's only one combination of zeros and ones to make up every single number here, okay? So why is 255 um, so uh, well known in computer science? Well, if you group together eight bits, just like this, we have eight bits, we call that simply one byte, okay? So um, if I say um, something is one bit of information, it is simply, um, the information is simply a yes or no. And if I say something has one byte of information, then it is simply um, the uh, basically saying uh, eight yes or no answers in parallel, okay? So groups of eight is usually um, how computer programmers think. So let's uh, quickly, go back into the lecture materials in Jupyter Lab and see how you could, if you wanted to, uh, see these binary um, numbers um, in Python. There is a built-in function called bin, so binary, and it takes um, a integer as the argument. So let's give it three, and indeed I get back one, one. So maybe you're confused about the zero B here. Well, the zero B, um, first of all, note we get back a text object. And what does the zero B mean? Well, zero B, so let's write it like this, zero B simply implies an integer number in binary representation. So what we could do is, if I wanted to say the number three in binary, I could say zero B one one, and I get back three, okay? Because it's the same three as the three I write in here. Okay, so this is the binary representation. And this is also the reason why we cannot simply go ahead and prefix a numeric literal with a zero, okay? Um, if we start with a zero in a code cell, then um, for example, the B must follow. There's also other options that we will see uh, in a bit, but um, if the B is following, so zero B always indicates that we have um, a binary number and of course, if I want to say the number 255, we just learned that 255 is eight ones. So let's try that. So let's simply go ahead and write one, 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 and then use the underscore one, 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 and maybe also put in a second underscore simply to make this more readable. So what this now says is in the binary system, um, have a number of two groups of four. So let's see what number that is. And indeed it's the number 255. It's one byte of information, okay? And um, that is um, how numbers are represented. Why do I uh, talk about this here in much detail? Well, the reason is that uh, the memory in the computer is always discrete. So there's always a fixed position of places where we can put either energy or no energy. So either zero or one. And um, so in other words, whenever we want to model something that in the real world is infinite, for example, real numbers, we will see that in the next video, 
then how can we do that? Well, we can't really do that. So um, you, you cannot model something infinite or you cannot model everything that is infinite in real world with just finite um, amount of information. We are going to lose something. And what we see here is why we are going to use something because there are only a f there's only a finite number of zeros and ones. And um, But one thing we do know is what I can already tell you, integer data type is a so-called precise data type. So the number three here is precise. And we will see what preciseness means in the next video when we talk about floating point numbers, which are inherently imprecise. That's already a, a warning, something that you really, really have to keep in mind, even as a practitioner, that uh, numbers, especially floating point numbers, they are not what they appear to be sometimes. So let's maybe uh, go ahead uh, and take this to one further level. So what you could do is you could take, for example, this text object, and you could also use the int constructor to create from a text object, let's make double quotes, an integer. However, if you do so, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and you give um, the int constructor a base, and we gave it a base of two for binary, and now we get back the, the integer three as well. So sometimes data um, is obtained in this way, and we have to like make it real numeric data. So this would be one way to do it. So let's now come to another topic, which is very, very simple. Are very very similar actually. So let's look at the so-called hexadecimal representation. So what is the hexadecimal representation? So it is like the system that you know from high school, the decimal system with 10 digits. So the 10 digits in the decimal system are 0, 1, 2 un until 9. Now the binary representation is basically a system with just two digits. So maybe let's write that. A system with just two digits, namely zero and one. And the hexadecimal system is a system with 16 digits. Okay, so now you may wonder how do they look like? Well, obviously they start with the digits uh, zero and one. And then also let's write down two and so on. And now when we reach the nine, so let's maybe write here nine, how do they go on? How do the digits go on? So how can we, ha how can we create for ourselves more digits than 10? Because on our keyboards, we only have 10 digits. Well, um, what happens is we are going to use the letter A simply. Uh, maybe let's do it like this, A. And then of course, uh, the next one would be B and so on. And the last one in the hexadecimal system would be F, okay? So simply instead of, um, yeah, having simply 10 digits, so as we know it from high school math, we now have 16 digits, okay? So that's the only really thing that is different. And um, one thing that you um, can know from this kind of diagram I drew here is if you look at groups of four, of four bits, this is basically one hexadecimal um, digit. So let's say and maybe mark it here. So this is a hexadecimal and this is a so-called hexadecimal um, digit. So um, in other words, um, when we view the data as groups of eight, we call it a byte. When we view it as groups of four bits each, we um, look at the hexadecimal representation. So how can we see that um, in Python? So let's look, go ahead and um, use the built-in function called hex. And let's give it the hex function, uh, the number three as before, and we get back um, zero x three. And what does the x stand for? Well, the x, the zero x stands for um, hexadecimal representation. So maybe let's also write that down. Zero x means hexadecimal representation. And uh, the three here means this is just a digit three coming from the right. And now let's look at a bigger number. So let's look at, for example, at the integer 11 and we get back the digit B indeed, okay? Because A is 10, obviously, and B then is 11. And so let's um, do two more of those. So the hexadecimal representation of zero would be just zero x zero, zero x as the prefix. And um, if we go ahead and say, what is the, um, hexadecimal representation of the number 255 would be simply be double F. So F for the first uh, bit and for the first group of four bits and the other F for the second group of four bits. 
And uh, why is that important? Well, the numbers between 0 and 255 you may have seen in many, many places on the internet. So when it comes to uh, colors in HTML, for example, and many, many other things, um, oftentimes um, numbers are represented on a, on a range between 0 and 255. And whenever you ask yourself, why is 255 such a weird um, limit? Why is it so often used? Well, um, if you look at only whole numbers between 0 and 255, you are talking about all the um, numbers that can be represented using two hexadecimal um, digits. So going from 00 to FF, basically. And um, I only cover this here because um, oftentimes when you're given data, they come in this uh, format. Okay, so um, oftentimes when you lo really look at really raw data, they come in a hexadecimal representation. And that is also the most generic representation um, in which, for example, um, different computers um, exchange information in. So a com one computer in the background may send hexadecimal or data in hexadecimal representation to another one, and they always encode and decode all the other data into this format. So um, it is something that as a data science practitioner, we will not see in daily life, of course. It is a little bit more theoretical, I know. However, it is something really worthwhile to at least know that it, ex it, that it exists because um, yeah, it is uh, every once in a while, maybe uh, once or twice a month, you are given data that comes in a form, in this form, and you have to decode it, so to say, and uh, do something with it. Okay, so um, this is everything you need about numbers. So a lot of the stuff you knew before, the underscore is quite new, I guess, but it's still nice to know. And then the binary representation, the whole point of this is just to get you an idea of how this works in um, memory. And then in the next video, when we talk about floating point numbers, we will contrast how floating point numbers work in memory with that here. And then we will see why uh, floating point numbers are inherently imprecise. That is the whole point of this. So I will see you um, in the next video.